We made a $10 million investment. We will now recover $36 million, I said. I made my final comments on the last presentation slide. We had invested in city properties, a Manhattan real estate firm gone bust. Fortunately, the property market had improved after our investment and we tripled our money. Fantastic. We should sell. Now that is what I call a home run, John said. What a deal. Well. Done, Rodica. Jonathan and Craig guided me through it all, I said. I came back to my seat. I called debut. I wanted to tell him about John's praise. Hey, he said. What's up? Just working on a pitch. I don't think we will get it, though. How about you? Debut said. I am at work. Another deal closed. You called for a reason? Yeah, I said. However, at that moment I didn't want to tell him my success story. Perhaps it was better not to share it than to do so and not get an enthusiastic response. What is it? Well, I said and wondered what to say next. Why was I hiding my success from him? I just had a good day at work, I said. What? Managed to make more money? He laughed. He was being funny. Still, I didn't like what he said, or maybe it was just his tone. I ignored. His barb. No just. I don't know. I just felt good. Grateful for what we have. We should be grateful. No, debut. We have so much. We have independence, jobs, health, family, a great city we live in and love. We have love. It's a lot to be grateful for, isn't it? Yeah, baby. We do. He sounded like he was about to yawn. That's sweet. Anyway, I better go back to my pitch. Sure. Sorry I disturbed you. Bye, baby, he said and hung up. I went back to my screen. Killed it. Craig came to my desk and high-fived me. Don't we always? I winked at him. Hi, this is Radhika Mehta from the New York office, I said. I had dialed into a conference call with our Asian office in Hong Kong. Owing to the time difference the call had been scheduled late, at 10 in the night. I took the call from home, sitting on the living room sofa. Debut read a book in the bedroom. Waiting for me to finish. Hi, Radhika. This is Peter Wu from the Hong Kong office, a voice on the phone said. Josh Ong from Hong Kong, came another one. Jonathan from the New York office, Jonathan said. I placed the phone on speaker mode so I could have my hands free. I had made myself a cup of mint tea and cupped it in both hands. Jonathan introduced the deal. We are dealing with a company called Luxvision, a spectacles and sunglasses manufacturer. Radhika has already sent out the info memo. Currently in trouble, has no cash. The only assets are some factories in China. Goldman Sachs excelled in working together across offices. While the deal came from New York, we would engage the Hong Kong office to help us out. Josh and Peter would visit the company. Plants in China to see if the factories actually existed and if they had any value. Client is saying the factory is in Shenzhen, just across the border from Hong Kong, I said. Easy then. We could do a day trip, Peter said. That would be good, I said. They are saying the factory is in the heart of town, and if we close it down we could rezone into residential use and sell apartments. As I finished my sentence, Debut tiptoed into the living room. I placed a finger on my lips to signal him to be quiet. He nodded and pointed at the fridge. He walked up to the fridge and took out a 
cup of strawberry yogurt. He offered me some. I declined and sipped my tea. I smiled at how domesticated we had become. He could be in the kitchen doing his thing. I could sip my tea and work. I sent him a flying kiss. He smiled back. I tuned back into the call. Shenzhen is growing fast. Depends on the location and local permissions. What about the workers? asked Josh, a VP in the Hong Kong Distressed Debt Group. Debus sat at the dining table and ate his snack. The call continued on the speakerphone. 200 workers. If we continue the manufacturing they stay, I said. Though if we keep the business running it is only worth 40 million. If we sell the land for apartments, it is 70 million, Jonathan said. Wow, Peter said, huge difference in value. Yeah, so obviously we want the workers out and to explore the land sale option, I said. Okay, give us a few days, we will make a visit and revert, John said. Hope we get good news, I said. The call ended. I hung up and shut my laptop. I noticed debut. Hey, you are still here, I said. He scraped out the last of his yogurt. Yeah. I was listening to bits of your call. Boring banker stuff, right? Kind of. However, I think I sort of understood what is happening. I stretched my arms above my head. It's a new deal. Company gone bust, factories in China, I said. Yeah, and you guys are trying to close it down, sell the land for apartments. True. The factory is old but in a great location. China is growing fast, so this is the heart of town now. Ready for bed? It's late. No, wait, what about the workers? He came to sit on the sofa next to me. They will have to be let go of. We will give them some compensation, I said. And their families? What about getting new jobs? Debut, they will figure it out. We will give them a few months' salary as compensation. They will find another job meanwhile. It's not that easy. What kind of blatant capitalism is this? I looked at Debut in shock. What? I said. Seriously? Blatant capitalism? You are trying to make the most money. Well, yeah, that is my job. We invest money, so we want good returns on it. But why do you have to fire people? I rolled my eyes. Is this a Bengali communist thing? Bengalis love communism, right? I don't know. It just feels wrong, what you are doing to make money. I am not doing anything wrong. We are doing what is legally possible and trying to generate maximum value. To make some rich Goldman Sachs partners even richer? What about the workers at this factory? Debut. Goldman Sachs has not created trouble for the workers. The company management screwed up borrowed too much money, ran their business badly and went bankrupt. Hence the workers suffered. We are simply there to clean up the mess. Like vultures. They could say they have come to clean up when they are actually feeding themselves. That's not such a nice analogy, but yes. You could say that. Yes, even in the financial system, you need the mortuary. You make money doing this. So, we also take huge risks. Nobody wants to touch these companies otherwise. I finished my tea. I went to the kitchen sink and washed the cup. Debut came up behind me. You like your job? I turned to him. Yeah, Debut. I love it. I am good at it. It's exciting. I am learning so much. It's a great firm. I am paid well. 
It kills me at times with work but I love it. I don't know. Just doesn't feel right. I hope the job doesn't harden you. Harden me? I said. What are you talking about? You were this sweet, innocent girl when I met you. You had a soft side. I still do. I am the same person. This is a job. I am more than that. I do it and come home to cuddle with you. Don't I? Yeah, he said, sounding unconvinced. You apply to digital ad agencies? I will. Soon. I thought you said you would. I will, Radhika. Don't keep pushing me so much. See, this is what I mean. You have become hard. I am just concerned, I said and threw my hands up in the air. I want you to be happy in your job too. I want you to settle down so we can take the next step. What step? I'd had enough of him faking ignorance. He knew exactly what I was talking about. With great effort, I kept calm and spoke again. About marriage. How many times do I have to bring it up? I said. I feel like I have to beg. You. You don't have to beg me. So how long do I fend off my mother? I have told you. I am not ready. My breathing became fast. I couldn't take this anymore. We won't get married tomorrow, debut. But we have to make some plans. I have to tell my parents I have someone in my life, so they don't knock on every door in West Delhi to find a boy for me. I want to tell them soon. What do you want from me? Tell me what is your plan for us. You want to get married in one year? Two years? Three years? Something at least. I think it is too soon to think about all this. We have dated, sorry, lived in for about two years. I think it is absolutely the time to at least think about this. I think it is not, Debut said. I think it is, I said. We locked eyes. And so you must be right. After all, you get the higher bonus, so what do I know, yeah? Debut said. I gasped. I raised my hand and pointed a finger at him. What the fuck? What did you say? Nothing, he said, probably regretting his statement. Did you just bring my bonus into our marriage discussion? No, I didn't. You did. I don't even think about it anymore. Is it on your mind? No, I don't care. You sure? If I were the sweet and innocent girl you met, whatever that means, you were also the sweet boy who talked about feminism while we walked in Manhattan. Remember? You will inspire other girls? Women need to show men they are no less? I don't care about your bonus. Okay? That is not what this is about. So then what? Explain to me. Why is it wrong for us to discuss the future if we have lived with each other for almost two years? I am not sure, he said. About what? I don't know. Suppose we marry each other. We will start a family, have kids, right? Yeah, of course, I said. So I am thinking. I don't know. I had this idea of what the mother of my kids would be like. Ha! Huh? Mother of your kids? I said. Sometimes, Debut talks such wacko stuff, I wonder what. They smoke in their ad agency offices. Yeah. It's important, right? What kind of mother I want for my kids, Debut said. Sure. I want a good father for my kids too. Can you come to the point? So are you going to keep working like this or leave work once you have kids? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. 
I'd like to work if possible. You think you can? Let's see. We'll have to work it out. If I make as much money as I do, I can afford full time. Help, take a house close to work, have our parents come. He interrupted me. See, this is what I am not sure about. What? When you talk in such practical terms. What do you mean? Like, if you were like this, in this hard job, fire the workers kind of role, would you even be? Affectionate towards our kids? What the fuck, dib you? I shouted. See, now you are losing it. Then you say you want to discuss things. This is not a discussion. You are talking bullshit. Making sweeping judgments. I am not. Okay, I like you. I love you. But I want my kid's mother to be at home for them. Maybe I will be. If needed. See, you are not sure. You have this hi fi mega paying job. My job will have nothing to do with my commitment as a mother. Do you get it? We stared at each other in silence for about 30 seconds. He finally spoke again, I don't. Think I can do this. Really, I can't. My heart stopped for a second. Did he just propose a breakup? Oh my god, had the only man. Whoever loved the unlovable me threatened to leave me. I turned my volume down and spoke in a calm voice. Debut. What's the matter with you? Why? Are you being like this? He shrugged. Work stress? No. Is it the call? Listen, this is the distressed debt business. Don't get so affected. It's business. Not only that. I checked the time. It was midnight. I had to wake up at 6.30 to prepare for an early morning. Meeting. Debut, calm down. Sorry I snapped at you. I will try to be understanding, okay? I went up behind him and hugged him. This is not the time to talk about such things. It's my mistake, I said. It's fine, he said, disentangling my arms. Shall we go to bed? I said. He nodded. We slipped under the sheets. I took off my nightsuit and drew him closer. I'm tired. Good night, baby, he said and turned away from me. Within a few minutes he was asleep. I, on the other hand, kept awake all night, wondering. What I would do if the one man who loved me decided to leave me. Since I hadn't slept I got out of bed at 5 a.m. I spent the next hour making breakfast. I made pancakes. Debut's favorite. I also cut fruit, boiled some eggs and made toast. I wondered why I was doing this. Was it because I couldn't sleep? Or did I want to calm Debut down? Or to show I could be domestic? Enough to be a good mother? Or did I want to prove that I could be sweet and innocent, which probably translates into docile and submissive? I wanted Debut to wake up and be happy. I wanted it more than the China deal or a bonus or anything else. I scolded myself for feeling that way, but I couldn't help it. His words about me not being potential mother material had shaken me up. Wake up, debut, eat the pancakes and please tell me I am lovable. He entered the living room at 6.45. I had already laid out the plates and placed a jug filled with orange juice on the table. I switched on the electric hobs and put a saucepan on it. Wow, he said, rubbing his eyes. Good morning, I said in my most cheerful voice. What are you doing? Making pancakes. You love them, remember? You want them with maple syrup or honey? Maple syrup. Is it the weekend? He said in a puzzled voice as he dragged a dining chair out. To sit. No, Wednesday. I just thought I would cook us something special. 
On typical weekdays we would gobble down cereal and milk and rush out of the house. I put a plate of blueberries, raspberries and blackberries in front of Debut. Fancy, he said. Berries are good for you. Start with this while the pancakes get cooked. He waved his hands. Don't you have to go to work, he said. I do. You had an important meeting in the morning, right? Yeah. I will have breakfast with you and then get ready. The smell of buttery dough filled the living room. The pancakes turned golden brown. I arranged two of them on a plate, drizzled maple syrup on them. I cut a banana into thin slices and arranged them around the pancakes. How about you? Debut said as I gave him his plate. I am making more, I said. Does he think I am less hardened now? I wondered. He ate in silence, perhaps wondering if this was a dream. I made my pancakes and sat in front of him. They are delicious, he said. Thank you. I should say thank you. You put in so much effort. What time did you wake up to make all? This? Five. Just an hour earlier, I lied. I hadn't slept at all. You do look tired. It's okay. I will be fine. I cut a piece of pancake. Radhika, I want to say something, Debut said. I know you will say sorry. It is okay, I said to myself. He must feel guilty now after he saw. How much I care for him. What? This is really sweet. Thanks. So are you. A sweet gesture for my sweet boyfriend. Thank you, Radhika. This is really sweet but... But what? Today you are making breakfast like this. This is awesome. But I am not happy. Not happy about what, baby? U.S. Why? Is this about last night? We were both angry, I said. I found it difficult to swallow the... Slice of banana in my mouth. It's not just about yesterday or about being angry. I have been thinking about it for many days. Weeks, actually. Really? And you didn't discuss it with me? I said. I felt a little stupid about cooking all. Morning. There is nothing to discuss. I know I am not happy. You are bored of me? Don't be stupid. So, I am being calm, okay? But I have an image of the wife I want. The mother of the kids I want. I am not judging you, but I think I want a housewife. What? I said. My fork almost fell out of my hands. It's what I have seen growing up. I go to work, make the money. Wife takes care of the home. Simple needs, happy family. What are you talking about, Dibu? Didn't you say women could achieve anything today? Didn't you encourage me when I had to apply for distress debt? I did. I still admire you. I respect all women who achieve big things. I think it is great. But you can't be with them? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I could. But you made me think about marriage and I did. I visualized a future home. I would like my wife to be there for me and my kids. And I can't be that? Will you leave your job? Why, debut? Why do I have to leave it? I like it. It's rewarding and fulfilling to me. What about the home? What about the home? You are going to work too, right? Why can't I? Oh, so you want to work and I stay at home? I didn't say that, but why do I have to choose one of the two? I get it. What, did you? You make more money. I should quit my job, right, not the high-flying you? Will you stop it? Stop calling me high-flying or whatever. 
when you do well I am happy for. You. Am I not? Why can't you be? He looked at me once and then sideways. I let out a deep breath and spoke again, as calm as. Possible. Nobody needs to quit if they don't want to. We can still have a good happy family, I said. Debut kept quiet. I could tell my words did not convince him. Say something, I said, putting my cutlery down. He remained quiet, continued to eat in silence. Tears welled up in my eyes. I wiped them with a tissue. He placed his hand on mine. Don't cry, he said. Don't make me cry and then say don't cry, I said, my voice breaking. Leave all this banking and morning meetings. You are stressing yourself out. I am fine, I said as I continued to cry. I am fine. You are this simple Indian girl. You need to love and be loved. Yeah, I am, I said, sniffling as I composed myself. I will take care of us. Don't you just want to be there for me and our future kids? I checked the time. It's 7.20. I really need to rush. I walked towards the bathroom. Debut spoke behind me. See? This is what you do. I am discussing something with you, he said. I turned to him at the bathroom door. I have a morning meeting. I am presenting a deal. I told you. But I am discussing something important. Leave the meeting today. I can't. I have to present the China deal. I went into the bathroom, took a quick shower and changed from my nightclothes to a white shirt and black trousers. When I came out debut was still sitting at the dining table. This is what I fear. Even as a mother this is what you will do. Then what, he said. I didn't respond. I stared at him for five seconds. He cowered a little, nervous at what I would do next. I reached the entrance door and opened it. I stepped out of the house. I glared at him one more time and slammed the door shut.